Hello, my name is Grayson Dancer, and I'm here to represent the uh, APEG Foundation, which is the American Photographies Archives Group. I just wanted to start out by telling the organizers of this amazing conference how honored I am to be here and be a part of this very crucial and important conference. Uh, Christoph and Carolina, I, I really I tip my hat to you. This is the beginning of, of greater successes for, for us in the future, and I hope that we all at the end of this conference can come together to see the future of this conference going forward. Uh, I'm going to give you a little background about myself first and then talk to you about the archives uh, group. Uh, just give me a second while this loads up. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, primarily the, the archive process for me is, is uh, a personal metaphor. This is spinning. I don't. Yeah. So, my beginning in archives actually comes in a quest for identity, in in the sense of looking for my father, who was very sick, and I did not know who he was. So I did the the open-ended question of who are you, and and you're going to die, and I don't know who you are. So. Uh, he uh, told me to go up to his studio and to see what I would find. So I went up to his studio uh, and discovered an entire life that was before I was born and, and everything that he did. Here, I can maybe take from there. Anyway, what a... Yeah, it's a large file. It's going to take a minute to, to load up. Oh... Uh, But the, the concept of archiving as, as a metaphor and the reason that you've seen me running around shooting everything is because I, I look at archives as a, a living, breathing entity. It's not just uh, looking at the past and only uh, remembering and uh, every minute is crucial. And the minute that we stepped off the plane to get here and the minute we talk in conversation, these are all archival moments that uh, we celebrate in our lives and we take nothing for granted. Uh, Sorry, just take a second. But uh, in respect to my getting to be an archivist, uh, it, it was the quest for identity that really centralized the whole uh, beginning and has brought me to, the, to, to you today. Uh, my father was one of these photographers from the early 50s when there was a very small group of photographers in New York City, about 30 photographers who were photojournalists and who documented uh, all the stories and uh, was was friends with Gary Winogrand and all these. This is going to take forever. All right. Well, as we say, technical difficulties. But I have a backup. Uh, this is a presentation on his on his jazz work. Um, I'm a musician, so for me, the connection with my father as a documenter of music is, is a special uh, thing. Um, my, some of my heroes, uh, such as Louis Armstrong and Miles Davis and Billie Holiday, were captured by my father, and it was a very uh, interesting uh, found finding, you know, when uh, suddenly I had photographs of my heroes that were uh, within one, one generation of separation from uh, my father to me, since he was the, the, ob you know, the observer there. And uh, what you're going to see is hopefully a combination of uh, some of the elements that I was able to put together. Archiving is, uh, is as much a research uh, proje project for me as uh, anything. This is, uh, okay, so this was Close Enough for Jazz, which was uh, an exhibition that I did in China and in uh, Australia. And basically, uh, I can go through some of this with uh, respect to describing the pictures. This is my father's most famous picture from 1952. This is him uh, getting an award for what was called Mambo Jambo. Uh, this is a picture I found uh, in his uh, Columbia University yearbook in 53. This picture was part of uh, an exhibition in the Whitney Museum recently, uh, and it is taken in 1952 at the Palladium Ballroom in um, New York City. Uh, this was during my father's early uh, Alexei Bronovich period. He was a student of Alexei Bronovich at the New School for Social Research. 
I actually found among the papers that it was this award that he had won for this picture, and it was a very seminal uh, part of his life, as I said, from the Whitney Museum, and uh, it was a very important show that took place a couple of years ago. He actually went to the museum, and it was one of my fine things to, uh, to bring him there and film him. So this was him but before I knew him, when he was uh, younger than I am now, and uh, one of the pictures that he actually has uh, given to my mother when they were courting and written a, a lovely poem. Uh, one of his first uh, big uh, successes was this, this wonderful picture here of Carmen Amaya, who was dancing, and uh, one of the things that attracted him was the, the, the motion. Uh, this is a, a letter that he wrote uh, back to my mother back then, uh, describing uh, with respect to uh, the Dave Brubeck group, uh, how he was trading uh, photographic lessons for music lessons. Uh, Paul Desmond was the, the, the saxophone player, and uh, it says here, Paul Desmond liked my pics and was apologetic and uh, having left New York without uh, getting in touch. The Brubeck mob, when they move, they move. And uh, it's traded uh, to be my guide in return for some lessons on the 300 millimeter lens, which was crucial, because the 300 millimeter lens got you closer to your subject. Anyway, as, uh, as an archivist, I, I am crazy about uh, contact sheets, because in the digital realm, unless you make your own contact sheets, you uh, really don't have the uh, the original view of the photographer. Um, this is Lee Morgan, who was a uh, trumpeter from uh, the Randall's Island Festival in 57. Chet Baker. As I said, I never knew any of these photographs existed, and this was all before my, uh, my parents had even met. This is uh, W.C. Handy, if a father of the blues, uh, on his 83rd birthday. And Actually, this is one of my parents' first dates because the woman with the tray serving Nat King Cole and W.C. Handy is actually my mother. So, as I said, archiving as personal metaphor couldn't get any closer than this, uh, chasing my, my parents' history, my own history. Um, one of my father's first albums was this uh, photo of uh, Anita Ellis. And then there was an article here uh, which I found rather interesting because by the time I got to my father, he really had moved way beyond the, uh, the ability to, to tell me too many things about his photographs. But uh, what I found that was really interesting uh, in this quote is, uh, here he says in the second paragraph, if truth is the laugh refuge of scoundrels, then the extreme close-up serves that purpose for the photographer. There is almost something about the large or larger-than-life image that is almost overpowering. And uh, this was, uh, you know, part of the, the process of finding what was interesting to him in his archive. Uh, you'll see Diego Rivera uh, among the photographs in this. As I said, uh, being an archivist, uh, I do a lot of the research of uh, finding the periodicals. This magazine piece, he didn't even tell me about. I had to find this by, by doing a lot of research to find it. And uh, it was exciting to see work that I had never seen before from the archive that was published. Uh, this was also uh, an important part of uh, the documentation. The, there were these jazz festivals in New York before jazz was uh, the celebrated uh, quantity that we know it today, and this is uh, Count Basie. And I like the fact that they incorporated a, a strip. This is Chris Connor from, uh, and this is Sarah Vaughan. And but this is Joe Williams. But the, the exciting thing here would be uh, these photographs had not been seen for over 50 years. So with the concept of archives, this was his, uh, his filing system. <laughs> and uh, it, it was exciting to, uh, to see that he had some sort of documentation. Because when I came to it, it was a, a, a tremendous archive of you know, overwhelming uh, chaos. Uh, this is uh, Dizzy Gillespie at, at Birdland in 1951. <laughs> Again, uh, these are some of his, uh, his slide boxes. Uh, you'll see uh, Billy Holiday and Lionel Hampton and uh, Louis Armstrong. Uh, this was the kind of work that he had never spoken about. And this was a, 
a connection uh, of, of the highest importance when, when the people that you know the most and you know the least uh, contain this sort of uh, personal archive the, the connection and uh, just tremendous. One of the mysteries had been surrounding uh, my father was uh, some Billie Holiday photographs and this was uh, on the back of one of the photographs and uh, I always like the, the back of a photograph because it's, it's sort of like a, a, a passport, a mini uh, destination uh, record of where the photo has been. So I had never imagined that the, the word C on the top left would be the name of a magazine. And indeed, C Magazine in 1957 printed these unseen uh, Billie Holiday photographs, which hadn't been seen, I guess, for 50 years. And uh, I'm working right now on a book of Billie Holiday photographs. Um, Dizzy Gillespie in, in color. I mean, the, the, the riches in, inside the jazz archive were, were just tremendous. Um, this is uh, an advertisement from the 1950s in which my mother is seen dancing on a, on a cover of a, <laughs> a magazine uh, al album. Tico was a small label that uh, did a lot of Latin music in the 50s. And then I found these uh, sort of unexplainable uh, covers that he did, uh, working with the, the artist uh, Tom Hannon. Uh, and this, this is tremendous. This is uh, Sonny Rollins with uh, Miles Davis at the Randall's Island in 57. And I did a show last year in New Orleans and then one in Shreveport with respect to this uh, moment, which was uh, the Timex Jazz Show in uh, 1958. You have uh, the great Louis Armstrong and uh, Jerry Mulligan. And it was a sort of a seminal session for, uh, for jazz because jazz was actually on television at the time and uh, being showcased. Uh, this was interesting. I went to Magnum and I did the research to find my father in the corner here, this is a Dennis Stock photograph, by the way. Uh, my father, just as he was about to photograph Louis, um, I showed him this before he died. It was one of the last things I showed him. My father's gone four years, and he had never seen this photograph, and the only reason I actually knew about this was I had known of Dennis's work from the session as well. So it was great that Magnum allowed me to do that. And uh, center stage there is, is uh, my father, and this is George Shearing at the piano. and. Uh, Rescuing history is, is really uh, one of those uh, important uh, parts of archiving that I like to do, to put together all the pieces that are swirling around that we, we don't take uh, into account. And so this was another album cover from this time. Um, this is just a student jazz band, but uh, with respect to my, the father's, my father's style, uh, was very sort of intimate and uh, provoking. So this is... Uh, We're doing time. Okay, so this is... Uh, Earl Garner. Again, uh, I'm celebrating contact sheet here uh, as an archivist. I'm about, uh, oh, forgive me. I, you'll forgive me. Uh, the presentation which I had prepared for you and which I can make available to you after this was all about APAG, which, was, uh, which is the, the organization that I'm here to represent. And actually, the reason that I joined APAG was because of the the work of my father, but the, the, the organization uh, is a grassroots organization in the sense that we are the, the children, and we are we are we are the, the the custodians of the archives that have been left to us, and we are the carriers of those dreams, and we we come together to support each other and to talk about projects and to discuss the issues of preservation and copyright and how to proceed toward grant and uh, you know to make. Uh, to make the archives survive, basically. I mean, archives are not here w without money. Money is a, is a, is a major part of uh, keeping a project alive. And um, with respect to APAG, we, we, we have discussions and we, we meet maybe a couple times a year at the, uh, the ICP in New York City and uh, we uh, talk about all those, those subjects that are important to the archives and uh, the, the work that is represented there um, the president, uh, Mary Engel, has uh, work of her mother, Ruth Orkin, and her father, Morris Engel. And there's work uh, represented by Ernst Haas. Uh, his daughter, Victoria, is there. And um, the webmaster, Jean Bubbly, has uh, done some beautiful things. She's the niece of, of, Jean, uh, of Esther Bubbly, a very important uh, photojournalist from the 1940s. Uh, about 75 members total, and uh, the organization is uh, is in many ways uh, growing 
because it started uh, with just a conversation at dinner a couple of years ago, and now we have about 75 members, and uh, the group uh, represents not just photographers, but uh, many photo archives, and uh, yeah, I feel very fortunate to, to be part of that. So I'm just continuing on my quest. Uh, currently, uh, the, the APAG is, is moving towards the, an exhibition and a, and, a, and a book possibility that we will will uh, discuss in the future. Um, Well, I, I apologize to you that I had a presentation that I was going to be showing you, but uh, at least I got to show you uh, a little bit of, of, of what was important in terms of, uh, of what the archive had. And uh, with respect to APAG, it's just an example of uh, one photographer from the, the, the American Photography Archives group, and just happens to be my father, so it's a very personal vision for me. But uh, the group uh, is, as we say, is, is growing, and. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you will be hearing from us in the future. Uh, I, th I thank you.